Hey there and welcome to a quick video tutorial on Adobe After Effects. Let's go file, new project. Okay, and this is your main uh, view of After Effects. We have your composition window, your project window where you keep your assets, and your timeline. Uh, to create animation, you need a composition. So you can go composition new, use a shortcut, or press this handy button down here. And you can give your composition a name, set your um, project dimensions, frame rate, uh, the length, and a basic background color. So OK, and that leaves our lovely composition up there that we can then um, double click to open up. And then that gives you access to your timeline. Um, if you click, right click anywhere in this window, you can go new and choose text, solid, light, camera, null, whatever asset it is you're after. So to start with, let's make a solid. Um, so again, you want to make sure your dimensions are what you need. Lovely blue color, dink, there we go, and it adds it to your timeline. You can lock it if you don't want to do anything else to it, or you can leave it unlocked. Uh, click this little drop down here. You have access to these transform settings and you can set keyframes for anchor point position, scale, rotation, and opacity. To show you how these work, so for example, if we were to scale down our solid to 19% with the uh, selection tool or V, you can click and move your item around the composition window. If you click on the little stopwatch to the side of one of these, so click on the stopwatch to the side of position, it will set a keyframe on your timeline. You can then move forward along your timeline to say two seconds, click and drag your object around. If you hold down shift, it will lock it um, to 90 degree angles. Um, once you finish moving, it will automatically create a keyframe for you at that position. You can then move backwards and forwards along that uh, trajectory. And these dotted lines are simply here to show you the trajectory it takes. If you deselect the object, the lines go away. So with those selected, you can highlight a keyframe and there are actually little handles here so you can adjust the path it takes along the vector. And there we go. You can also apply things like Easy Ease to improve the way the animation moves. So you can highlight the keyframes, right click, go Keyframe Assistant and you have access to these. So you can go Easy Ease, Shortcuts, F9. And then that will ease in the motion and ease out. So we'll start off slow, fast in the middle and then slow at the end. You can also highlight the keyframes, press this button here and it will bring up a graph editor. And if you make sure with this button here that edit speed graph is ticked on, which it normally is by default, and that's via that second button there, you can then highlight a keyframe and pull the handles out and it will affect the speed at which it moves along the path. So it will start off slow, much faster in the middle and things like that. So that's the basics of animation. You could do the same to text or you could use shape layers. Okay, so very quickly, paths and masks. Um, with the pen tool up here, with no layers selected, you can click on your composition window and you can draw a shape. Much the same as you can with Adobe Illustrator or similar. You've got your fill and stroke settings up here and you can change the width of the stroke. Click on the word stroke. You can assign, you can turn stroke off, um, have gradients and things like that. Also, in your drop down on the shape layer, which has been added to your timeline, you have access to the path. So you could set keyframes for the shape of the path that you've drawn out. You've got, you can play around with the colors, keyframe the color of the stroke, the thickness, and again, similar things for the fill. You can also, with your shape selected, go over to add, and there's a selection of other things you can add to a keyframe. For example, you could add trim paths. We could get rid of our fill completely. And with trim paths, we could keyframe the line being drawn around. And then you could have that being drawn in and out at the same time, and it will look like a worm following a path. Um, also, with the pen tool, if you have a solid selected or an image or an asset from Adobe Illustrator that's been imported, so the pen tool selected and the item selected, if you draw on that item, rather than creating a shape layer, it actually creates a mask. And again, that's added into the timeline with a drop-down, and you can keyframe things like the mask feather, um, the shape, and you can decide if the mask is adding, subtracting, and things like that. After Effects allows you to animate in 3D space, so we're gonna make a quick couple of objects and show you how that works. So let's right-click and make a few solids. So we've got two different squares, and we'll make some text. Um, kaboom, here we go. So at the moment, the layer order dictates which one's visible. But if we make all those layers 3D, let's select them all. And over here, we have this panel of extra options. If it's not visible, it may be that this button's been pressed. So let's press that button. And suddenly, all those layers are 3D. 
and they have a gizmo similar to those seen in 3D packages and you can pull objects forward on the Z axis, X and the Y. So even though the uh, magenta solid is at the bottom of our layer stack because it's been pulled further forward on the z-axis it's the actual one that's visible. We can change our camera view in the composition window to show two camera views. So this is our active camera and this one shows you the layer order. So this is from the top viewpoint, this one's at the back, so the blue squares at the back, pink's at the front and our text is in the middle. You can also right click and create a camera. Various camera settings you can add, you can turn on depth of field which increases your render time. So that drops a camera into the scene, which you can pull back in this viewpoint, or if you're over here, you can press C and cycle through the camera tools, which is the same as that drop down up here. And with that selected, you can click and move your camera around, you can rotate. Lastly, you can drop in lights. Dink, spotlight, it's casting shadows. These are it's remembered some settings from the past, but that's fine. So it's made a big light in our scene, a spotlight, and we can pull it back and voila, um, double click the light. It is already being told to cast shadows, but you can't see much. Let's move kaboom to the front. So it's gone the text, drop down, cast shadows on, and then when we zoom into, go back to one view in our composition window, zoom in, you'll see there's a shadow is being cast by the light or by the text. So we can now pan around. And that's a quick introduction to 3D in After Effects. Three-dimensional space is a geometric setting in which three values are required to determine the position of an element. Sorry, Alexa just decided to join the conversation then. Stop it! Mm -hmm. Finally, I want to show you how the effects work in Adobe After Effects. So let's go File, Import, File, or you can right-click in the Project window and go Import File. So on my desktop, I'm just going to import this bit of footage and you can double click it and play it and it will open up a new window separate from your composition window and this is our Stormy Studio animated ident. So this is just a bit of video footage, it's not actually um, editable. But we can drag that down on, onto our timeline and you'll see we can now scrub through it and it will play up to five and a half seconds. So with that in place we can right click and go effects and browse all our effects or if you have it open, our effects presets window you can access all these different things. Some of them do particle generation, uh, image editing. There's more elaborate effects like video copilots, third party ones, Element 3D, which is fantastic, but a paid plugin which allows you to bring in 3D objects from Cinema 4D or other 3D packages um, using OBJs. Um, there's things like Plexus made by Robite, which is superb for that digital um, grid sort of look and feel. But anyway, just to quickly show you how it works, so with our footage selected, let's grab uh, the CC toner. Put that on our footage, and CC toner is a nice one for quickly applying a color palette to a mixed bit of footage. So you can assign, you know, tie it in with a certain brand guidelines. And now we have some footage that the blacks are black, the whites are whites, but the middle colors are all pink and purple. And that's just one of many, many different effects out there. Um, and then you can stack them up. Also contrast, which I've never used in my life, but it obviously does something. You could add blurs, uh, Gaussian blur, used to be called fast blur. And there we go, it still plays nice and smoothly. And there we go, got a bit of audio there, which you can turn off with this button here. Uh, when previewing, this is your preview window. You can drop down the quality to improve playback. I can press play and you can see the green line there rendering the timeline. Um, okay, and I think that's it for today's video. I think we've touched on enough things from uh, the layout of the application, how the project window works, adding layers to your timeline, a bit of 3D, how compositions work, paths, masks, um, effects, and things like that, and for camera moves, and even a bit of lighting with shadows. There's so much more you can do with this application, and I hope to do more videos in the future. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.